This video introduces and understands such a concept as a sector, and how with the help of these sectors we can define and create more interesting 3D levels using binary partitioning only 2D space. And in this demo you can clearly see what kind of geometry we can use and design for our levels, that is, we can create rooms with different transitions in the height of floors and ceilings, we can design different windows and doors using transparent textures. And by and large we will get almost all the tools with the help of which we can create the same levels that we can meet in Doom. So in this video we will not only learn how to code all this, but we will also act as the designer of our first level, and so let's go back to the starting point we reached in the last video. So, we have a renderer of BSP tree segments as 3D wall models, traverse this tree from front to back, and thanks to binary space partitioning we render the segments that only face us. And if you are familiar with my channel you may have had a sense of deja vu at the sight of rendering such walls, because such things have already been created with the help of software rendering and ray casting techniques, and the second time in the video about Wolfenstein 3D clone using OpenGL, and this time we will go further and build a more interesting level geometry, and for this purpose I suggest to consider the following concept and rules for defining this geometry. And to begin with, let us consider a room in which there is some transition in floor height, which in turn forms a step in this room. And to define the geometry of this room, we need to set six points and choose the direction of the segments so that they're normals, that is, the front sides look inside the room, but how do we deal with the segment that divides the room in height? And here we use a similar approach used in Doom, that is, we need to introduce the concept of a sector. And in our case the sector is a certain closed area of segments, in which the heights of floors and ceilings are defined. And this is not just 2D area, but in a broader sense it is a volume formed by the height of walls in this area. Let's assume that the origin of the coordinate system is here, and with respect to the y-axis we will set the height of floors and ceilings for each sector. In this case, the zero sector has a height equal to zero, and the sector with number 1 has some height h1, and in addition, the ceiling heights are equal for both sectors. And since the sector with number 1 has a higher floor height, the segment in the middle of the room instead of a normal wall becomes a wall whose height is equal to the difference in floor heights of these two sectors, and eventually forms a step. Thus, if this segment is visible from the zero sector, the normal will be directed towards this sector. Also it should be understood that this segment is common for two sectors, but the sector where the normal is directed we will call the front sector, and the other is called the back sector for this segment. And all walls formed by segments that have back sectors or adjacent ones, we will call portal walls. And all walls formed by segments with only front sectors will be called solid walls. And by the way, the same approach for wall types is used in the original Doom. Also here it is worth mentioning that we will use three types of textures, for portal wall can use all three types, it is lower, middle and upper texture, but solid walls can only use the middle texture. And as for the sectors, we will create 3D models of floors and ceilings for them along the boundaries of their segments, and so for these sectors we will also define corresponding textures. And these were the basic concepts for designing levels in this engine, and now let's understand how to implement it all in the code. And first of all, in the data types file we will have a new class named sector, with attributes for defining floor and ceiling heights, as well as identifiers of the corresponding textures for them. In the segment class we have added attributes for the front and back sector identifiers, as well as attributes for defining textures for the segment. And now let's understand how to define the level geometry. So, in the test level file we have level settings and coordinates of segment points defined as before. From new things, we need to define parameters of all sectors of the level, and we define them in the dictionary sector data, the keys of which are sector numbers, and in its values we define dictionaries with values of heights of floors and ceilings. And then it is proposed to create a list in which only segments of sector boundaries are defined, because a little later we will have another list for a separate type of geometry. And this list contains the following data structure. For each segment, a list is created in which we first specify a tuple of coordinate points of that segment. Then we specify a tuple of two values, the first of which defines the front sector of the segment, and the second of which defines the back sector if the segment has one. This is followed by a tuple of three values corresponding to the textures used for the wall model. Thus we define first three segments that belong to the zero sector, then a segment common to two sectors and segments of the first sector. And when defining the sectors, we make the floor height of the first sector slightly higher relative to the zero sector, and the ceiling heights are the same. 
And when parsing level data, we will have a method to handle sectors, where we use sector data to create instances of the sector class and put it all into the sectors dictionary. And there will also be a method to handle segments, where we create instances of the segment class and add them to the raw segments list to create our BSP tree. So, now we need to build models of walls, and it's worth noting here that we will have four types of models of these walls, these are three types of portal walls, these are lower middle and upper. And there will be one type for solid. These types are due to the fact that each of them has a peculiarity in calculating the vertices for each quad, taking into account the values of floor and ceiling heights. And then in the models class the method for building wall models will look as follows. As mentioned above, if a segment has no back sector, then we build a solid wall model for it. And the condition for building portal wall models will be different floor heights for lower walls, and different ceiling heights for upper walls. And the middle portal wall is built only if the middle texture is set. In the wall model class everything remains the same, except for the method to get the wall quad mesh. Now we will use the get wall height data method to get top and bottom values for vertex and texture coordinates. In this method, for each model type, the corresponding values for bottom and top are determined, depending on the floor and ceiling heights of the front and back sectors. And it is quite obvious to determine this if you present the model type and sectors from the side view. And as you can see now it is possible to render the geometry described by us according to the specified rules. That is, we have our two sectors, the height of the floor in one of them is higher and therefore the portal lower wall is rendered and acts as a step. And by the way, in order to better explore our levels, methods for moving the camera along the y-axis and rotation around the x-axis were added to the camera class. And now let's make the ceiling height in the first sector lower than in the zero sector. And in this case we can see the rendering of the upper model of the portal wall along with the lower one. And just in case you need to build something like a column or wall just inside the sector, we should consider one more approach to define such geometry. So, now we want to place some column in the zero sector. To do this, we define four points for the segments of this column. And for all the geometry inside the sectors we create a corresponding list. The same data structure remains here, where we simply define the segments of the new object with the sector number. And all we have to do is to parse this data using the handle segments within sectors method, where we also create an instance of the segment class, and add it to the raw segments list to create our BSP tree. And in this way we can render our column, and as you understand any object defined inside the sector will be rendered as solid walls. And we have considered one more technique for designing levels in this engine, but besides wall models we need to create floor and ceiling models, and let's get away from design methods a little bit, and understand how to create these models. So, as you understand, the ceiling and floor meshes will be identical for each sector, but only with different vertex heights in their order. And moreover, our sectors can form different shapes, they can be either convex polygons or concave. And to create their meshes, they need to be triangulated, and here we can use the constrained Delaunay triangulation algorithm, with which you can triangulate all kinds of polygons and those that even have holes. We may not implement this algorithm, and simply use some geometry library that has this triangulation algorithm. And my choice fell on the sect module, and it is installed by the command shown on the screen. And before we touch on meshes and triangulation, we need to get a list of all segments for each sector, and for this purpose the level data class uses the corresponding dictionary. And we will get the data we need by iterating over the list of segments of sector boundaries. So, in the models class in the build flat models method, we will create floor and ceiling models using the flat model class, and for each sector we will have two of these models. The structure of the flat model class is very similar to the wall model class, but here instead of using the method to get a mesh of a wall quad, we use the method to get a mesh of a polygon. Here we use constrained Delaunay triangulation through the get triangles method, but the only condition is that we give the triangulation function an ordered list of vertices so that they form a closed outline. That is, we form these vertices from segment points for the current sector. 
and as a result of triangulation, we get a list of triangles and sector vertices, with the help of which we calculate all the necessary attributes for creating a model mesh. And as for rendering, since we haven't gotten to optimization yet, at the moment we will iterate on sector ids, and render our models for each sector accordingly. And so we can create floor and ceiling models of sectors, and render them. And if we change the shape of the sectors, as you can see, the models are still correctly built and rendered. And before we look further at designing the geometry of the level, let's divert a little bit to such an important point as loading and applying textures. So, in my case, the texture files are located in the corresponding folders named flats and walls, they are PNG images and the file names are ordinal numbers starting with zero. In the texture id file we create the corresponding enum classes where we assign appropriate names to the textures, and at the moment this is a set of test textures. In the textures file we set the paths where the walls and flats folders are located, and in the textures class we load these textures into GPU memory, while we generate mipmap levels and set the desired filtering. And thus we have two lists of textures walls and flats, and to select the required texture we will use our enum classes. And an instance of the textures class is created in the constructor of the models class. Then in the flat model class using the get texture method we will get the necessary texture depending on the id value of the floor or ceiling texture. And in the class wall model in the same method we will choose a texture depending on the type of wall, and if the id of texture is not specified, we can assign a default value of 0. And if we run the program, you can see that for our walls ceilings and floors default textures have been applied, meaning their id is 0. And now let's look at how to apply the rest of the textures. So, in the test level file, when defining sectors, we can now specify which textures we will use for floors and ceilings in each sector. And as for the walls, as you remember when defining segments, the last tuple contains the identifiers for the lower middle and upper texture, and we use our enum classes when assigning texture identifiers. So now you can set textures for each object in our level, which is an essential tool when designing a level. And now we're going to look at a few more methods of specifying geometry for levels. And there is one interesting special case, for this let's consider when the floor and ceiling heights of the first sector will be higher than the heights of the zero sector, that is we are designing a staircase. And in this case we do not observe the upper portal wall. This is because we designed the geometry relative to the floor, but the upper wall is actually built. But the front sector for it is sector 0, so when we traverse the BSP tree we never see it from sector 1. And let's look at how we can solve this problem. In the level data class when we parsed the sector boundary segments, we added a method in which we check the segments for which the ceiling height of the front sector is lower than the height of the back sector. And in this case we create a reverse segment whose direction is opposite, and by using two flags whether the segment has lower or upper wall, we will remove the upper wall for the original segment, and remove the lower wall for the reverse segment, because they will be unnecessary models. And in the models class, when building wall models, we will check the values of these flags in our segments and build corresponding models. And this way we have the upper wall displayed correctly, because for the new reverse segment we have changed the front and back sectors, and we get it by traversing the BSP tree, and also we don't generate extra models of other walls. And so we can create any kind of stairs in our levels without any problems, and let's now look at another type of geometry that we can create in our engine. And we will consider the possibility of creating not only solid walls within sectors, but also various recesses and ledges of the desired height within these sectors. And let's define the points by which we will build sector 2, and this sector is inside sector 1. Since we want to make a recess, for the segments, sector 2 will be the front sector and sector 1 will be the back sector. Now when defining the data for this sector, we do the same as before, and since it is a recess, we make the floor height lower than in sector 1. But for sector 1, in order to properly triangulate its mesh, we now define the nested sector's attribute, 
and this will be the list of sectors that are nested in this sector. And when defining segments, we take into account their direction, and correctly define front and back sectors. Since Sector 2 forms a hole inside Sector 1, when creating a mesh model of Sector 2, we need to triangulate it correctly. To do this, we iterate through the list of nested sectors and form a list with the contours of holes, and the holes are the contours of these sectors. And we have to pass this list of holes to the function for constrained Delaunay triangulation. And as you can see, we've got some indentation in Sector 1. By the way, if we change the height of the ceiling of Sector 2, we can also get the same protrusions or recesses on the ceiling. But if you want to have some box on your floor as a pedestal or display case, then you need to take the reverse order of the segments, and make the floor height higher than sector number 1. And we have one more design element left to consider, and that is the use of portal mid walls, and they are most suited to the use of transparent textures. So, we can only build the middle wall model for portal walls, which are segments that have front and back sectors. And then let's define some transparent window texture for them. And in this case, we see some pretty strange things through these walls, this is because we are traversing our BSP tree from front to back, and this traversal will be the basis for the main optimization of the engine. But as for transparent objects, they should be rendered the other way around, from back to front. And for this purpose in the view renderer class we first memorize the order in which the middle walls appear, and when rendering we reverse them. But even in this case, all is not well. Although we can see the correct image through the windows, we can't see the windows themselves, which are on the other side. And the reason for this is that those walls are turned backwards, so when we traverse the BSP tree, they are not added to the render list. And here we can do the same thing as we did with the reverse segment. And we can add a condition in the same method to create a reverse segment for the middle walls only, which will be used in the BSP tree construction. And with this approach, we finally get a correct rendering of the middle models for the portal walls, and this was the last tool for our level design we looked at in this video. And in the source code to the video you can find an example of building a level like in this demo. And as you have seen, we now have enough tools to create Doom-like levels. Of course, I do not deny the option of creating a graphical editor, but it makes sense only when you have a ready-made engine. And a rather important point to mention is that every time you change the coordinates of points or add new segments, you should find the best seed value again, so that you have a subbalanced BSP tree with minimal segment splits.